Now, according to Forrester, um, there are usually some tipping points where an organization decides that they have a data quality problem. And it's usually built around some kind of process. And digital transformation, I think, falls into this uh, particular area. But they usually start to realize that they need some kind of management process when they have more than one entry point for customer data or citizen data. Um, they have um, increased demand for intelligence and analytics. And I know a lot of organizations are beginning to invest heavily in things like big data analytics, data lakes, uh, uh, predictive analytics, and other topics like that. Those have to be driven by good data, have to be driven by um, un a, a centralized understanding. And it makes this particular point even more important. Um, and because we have different ports of the organization that have different views of your customer, and there's obviously the garbage in, garbage out, the reporting and analytics that don't produce the right results because the data that's coming into those systems is not properly treated. So what's the way to do this? Uh, and every organization, again, I think this is a Forrester uh, slide, uh, every organization is going to travel this particular path, uh, starting with, we don't really have a process today. <laughs> It's undisciplined. Uh, we have maybe a CRM system, or we have some kind of a tracking system, or we have an operational system that tracks this information. We've assumed for years that that means I have good data. Um, but then they usually, at that point, become to realize when they start implementing their BI technologies and their data warehouses and their data lakes and analytics that mm, maybe not so much. And it becomes reactive, right? So I'm not going to necessarily focus the energy on fixing the operational system, what I'm going to do is now pull that data out, fix it someplace else, so now I can fix my analytics and my reports and stuff. But it still really exists as a problem back in the operational system. Then you start to go from there to becoming more proactive. And this is where operational um, ideas like digital transformation start pushing more. Because obviously having it right in a report isn't enough to really solve the digital transformation puzzle. I have to operationally fix this. So now I start looking at single views, usually starting with a particular domain, like customer, product, uh, service, et cetera. But ultimately, when you get to the truly governed piece of trying to unify that view and having a consistent uh, uh, presentation of that data for both operational and reporting purposes and putting the systems in place on top that would help you get there. Now, enterprise data quality, um, the, there's usually a process or, or a, a flow to this um, that you go through, and it's cyclical, right? It's not a one-time pass-through. As I mentioned before, this is incremental. And so you start out with analyzing what is my problem. Data profiling tools, uh, data discovery tools, uh, and other forms of analytics against your data sources are very helpful in understanding what is my current state of the data. What is it I expected it to be, and what is it actually like, right? Um, and then you start into the standardization, right? And so there's tools, depending on the kinds of data that you're using, that can help with that. Uh, and standardization could be um, making sure that all of the address data in my systems is formatted in the same way, making sure names are treated the same way, making sure phone numbers, social security numbers, other things are all entered in in a standard and, and way that every system can predict how that information is going to come across. Then I can get to matching and deduplication, right? I can start from there to look for multiple entries of the same citizen in multiple systems and then figure out how to merge that, not just to replace one with the other, but actually to take those multiple records and create one master that covers everything that's needed. And then from there, there's actually other things that you can start to do. And this is another area that we're particularly helpful in, with clients on, and that's enrichment. So there are, there are loads of external data sources that you can begin to leverage within your organization in order to add additional detail to these records. So Pitney Bowes, for example, I think we have a library of over 400 different external data sources for different use cases to help you add more detail and better serve your to drive better service for these citizens. So for example, we can append tax code information 
or utility information or school district information or other pieces of information, whether it be voting districts or whatever, to this detail in order to help drive better analytics and better understanding. And that's a piece that we can do as well. And then there's the monitoring because you want to make sure once you've got this set that you continue to practice on this, continue to measure your KPIs against the data quality, report back, and then continually fix and preserve and hopefully begin to that upper, upper curl into uh, better and better data quality. Now another, actually, before I go to the next slide. Now for us, a lot of this is centers on a concept that we call single customer view. So this is kind of, um, of taking it not just to the standard of within my operational systems, I want to maintain good data quality, but actually begin now to unify that data in a central location, whether that be an MDM hub or other storage location. So for example, I can, um, not only uh, create a, a good customer record, but I can start to drill this into a central MDM system that operationally hooks back to my, oper to my uh, excuse me, in real time hooks back to my operational systems so that I can keep synchronization between all systems and make sure that if an update comes from one system, it can populate to other places as well. I can also use that as a central place to drive analytics. And one of the things that we do with clients is we've built our centralized hub based on a graph type technology, which allows us to do a lot of relationship analysis uh, of how citizens might relate to certain services or certain assets that the city might own uh, and, and understand that and, and give a better representation of those relationships as opposed to just looking at the entity as an individual. And then of course, the, big, the, final, the final piece in this is just ROI. Uh, and this is something that not everybody really does, but is probably something that would be the most helpful in terms of justifying these processes, because data quality is kind of an interesting beast. In the beginning, everybody thinks they have good data. So investing in good data is kind of like, well, I've already got good data, why do I need to invest in it? And it's usually not until a project begins to fail at a high cost that you really kind of understand this problem. Having a model for measuring return on that data, what it means from an operational efficiency standpoint, a customer satisfaction standpoint, et cetera, can be very key to selling the process up through management. And we really encourage people to kind of take a look at that as, as a way of doing things. So finally, let me go through my uh, example here. And I'm gonna reach over to across the ocean here to Australia, because uh, this was one of our more fun uh, implementations that we've done recently. This is with a group called Brimbank City Council. It's one of the larger city councils in Australia. Uh, we've got a few of them there for whatever reason. We've got a very good group at, uh, at reaching out and talking to these councils there. And they've done a really good job of helping these councils start to digitize and, and move along this, era, this notion of, of digital transformation. Um, in the case of Brimbank, uh, you know, one of the largest in Australia, very diverse community, and um, they provide a load of services to people, everything from childcare, road maintenance, parks, uh, disaster response, you name it, they, they're into it. And they have uh, an initiative that they've started down the path of, of digital transformation uh, in order to serve those client bases through digital channels. Now, you know, out of this, a um, couple of things here. A, the data aspect of this is really what we worked on, right? So just to be clear. And helping them get that view across was dozens of different service areas in the beginning in order to unify and have a single portal that then could feed out to their web applications, their mobile applications, et cetera, was, was the project that we worked on specifically. But I, I'll highlight something here that I actually found interesting. In addition, uh, Helen here mentions that they're now better able to respond to government compliance mandates that might come down the road, right? So as I mentioned, like GDPR, the, the example I gave earlier, um, the, having already gone through the exercise of creating this view and knowing that, con that customer citizen data is a subject of much debate in most governments, 
they're now feeling like they're much better prepared to deal with any future regulatory requirements that might come down the road than they were prior to going through this exercise. So there's a future benefit here to having this in place beyond just the current project of digital transformation. And the benefits that they're getting out, there's operational efficiency, there's risk mitigation. I have a be having a single view of this data and knowing where the data resides allows me to protect the data, better understand who's accessing the data, where it's being used, et cetera. And then the community engagement and self-service aspects of it, which is really the driver for the whole thing. And then there's, of course, the financials, right? So from the operational side, what Brimbeck Senior Council saw as they began to roll this out and what they expect to see over the next several years is a decrease in some of the most expensive channels that they have today, right? Face-to-face, -face, these are average costs that, uh, that we came up with. So face-to-face -face, uh, inter in, uh, interactions cost them about $16.90. Telephone, or actually postal, is the next most expensive at $12.79 than telephone. But the real interesting point is the, the drop in cost when they go online, right? The removal of that human interaction is a dramatic cost decrease. And you can see their expectation about how much they're going to decrease the channel interactions for telephone, postal, and face-to-face -face and move that interaction, not get rid of it, but move it to online, that's a pretty massive cost savings. And these numbers are over a 10-year projection. Now their initiative, which they call Community First, is you know is gives them a lot of benefits, and and it's very important not to just look at this from an operational standpoint, but also understand that what you're trying to do is better serve your community, right? Provide that interaction that uh, delights and 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 gets them interacting with what the services that you provide, and making sure you've got that trusted data, that holistic golden record, operational efficiencies, and community self-service uh, are all big drivers for this. And my last slide here. Um, and so when we went through, just to kind of give you an overview of how we helped them out and where we fit into the whole thing, this was basically a picture of all the different ways that they, were in, they wanted to be able to interact with their customers based on the diversity of their community and the types of systems and services that their community uses. They've got everything here from Twitter and Facebook, SMS, web applications, email, um, snail mail, you name it, they've, they've got uh, direct customer telephone interactions, they, they do it all. And of course, on the back end of that, we're a number of different systems supporting those interactions. I love build slides. Um, and so mainly what we're, our, our process in helping them go through this, this uh, data quality single customer review pre, um, uh, project was to get this data all into a single location so that they could feed out not just to all those different points from a centralized place, but also help them drive the analytics that give them the insights in order to continually improve and better serve their community base. Any, any questions? All right. Um, so at this point, Cordelia, I'm going to hand it over to you from California Franchise Tax Board. Thank you. not going to argue with any of that. Um, I have worked at Franchise Tax Board for one quarter of Pitney Bowes' lifespan. You can do the math. You're all data geeks, right? Um, and for the last 10 years, I have worked on or for a little project we like to call Enterprise Data to Revenue, all about having a single view of our customer, which we call a taxpayer. Um, and with the notion of you know, knowing who we're interacting with and knowing all, you know, what are we doing with them? So I'm going to start with telling you, you don't know your data the way that you think you do. Um, enterprise data to revenue brought together legacy feeds. So all of these systems that came on board after I started working for Franchise Tax Board are now legacy systems. And um, we're talking about accounting systems, compliance systems, all places that are doing business with our customers. And then more than 20 different what we call third party feeds. So these are data from other state agencies, from cities, counties, you name it, any place that we can get data legally, we will take it. Um, and then you want to put it all in the blender and pull out the golden record, right? That's what our project description was. We're going to, you know, just like Willy Wonka, you won the golden ticket, you know who your customer is, you know where you're going. But there are some challenges to that. So the first 
um, lesson learned, um, we started off the right way. It's profile your data. And we did profile our legacy data. We started off on a good note. Um, on a positive side for IT, there were very little surprises in our legacy data. Our COBOL programmers, they know what they're doing. I think we had one or two codes that popped up that hadn't made their way into the documentation and, you know, a couple of little um, unexpected values that had to be fixed, but small. I mean, we're talking in the hundreds, not in the millions. Then we started looking at demographic data. And that is where our legacy um, Easter eggs started to show up. And this is where your business doesn't know the data the way they think they do. They have experts. They know all about the things that they're doing, but they don't know their impact on the data. So for example, we would sit down and we'd say, okay, should we include these records in this new system we're building or should we screen them out as garbage? And one of them was a small workaround. You know, oh no, we, that only happens a few times. And then I look at a manager straight in the eye and say three quarter of a million times. In your accounting system, there are three quarter of a million records where this little workaround was done because the collective does not understand the impact of what little units doing little things for their own little purposes. So again, you profile your data, you find those Easter eggs, you can sit down. We sat down with various user groups, found out what their process was, why they were rigging the system the way that, the way that they were because anybody that has a device that doesn't work for them they hack it. I can't tell you how many people I know that hack their cell phones, right? The same thing is going to be true of your legacy systems, only they hacked it with unit procedures. And local, local, I know how to get around that rule. The, the part where we kind of failed was we didn't think about profiling the third party data, right? Why would we? We've got a record layout and we know the data and it fits the record layout. But all of those systems that we get data from, from DMV, EDD, B of E, they have the same problem. They don't know their data the way they think they do. And so when we started profiling, well, we didn't profile their data. That's the lesson learned. Um, we started to have all sorts of weird matches come up when we tried to put it in our MDM blender, master data management. Weird things came together. Other things were falling out for various problems. So we backtracked a little. We started profiling that data also. And we found that, again, their legacy systems, people real people sitting at a keyboard have to get somebody's name into a system. You know, this is where the first name field ends up being a couple. So it's Bob and Mary. So you have to come up with rules for that. So we were able to persevere and get all that done. It's all in the blender now. Um, but profile your data would be my number one thing to do. If you're going to pull together customer data, your own, other people's, and put it in that blender, Filter it first. Look at look at where the things are, and then come up with the rules to handle that. We didn't we didn't throw those records out. We just simply implemented a lot more rules for processing that data. Um, the other thing is, your customer is critical. Now, um, I married a Chinese man. His name is Min, which is not a very common Chinese name. I get Korean mail all the time. Mass marketing things written in Korean. Neither my husband or I can read it. And it clearly wasn't, you know, they, they aren't speaking to the person that they thought they were speaking to in that mode. If you're a mass marketer, it doesn't matter. If Amazon pops up with an occasional thing that you're like, oh, one of my kids was shopping on my accounts because I'm not interested in that, it doesn't matter. Collectively, little things like that to a mass marketer don't matter. But if you were to call Visa and say, hey, why did I get hit with a late fee? And they said, oh, sorry, we put that payment on another account. We thought that was for somebody else. You know, you'd be pretty upset. And that's the same thing that happens with governments. People are not forgiving of governments. They want it to be right. Your tax return, your payment, those should match up always. So um, we came up with strategies to implement the processes that would prevent negative customer impacts. When we pulled all this stuff into our blender, we had lots and lots of um, matched up duplicate records, right? And we don't know, are these really the same person? Is Chris and Chris a married customer, couple? Or is Chris and Christine the same person at the same address? You know, you have, to, you have to worry about those things. So we prevented external access. If two of our accounting system records come together, we prevent external access to that account until it's resolved. We have a permanent team. They work on two modes. One mode is prioritize with analytics that say, these are the people most likely to contact us, clean those up first. And then they also react 
to individual hits, somebody called on the phone, put them at the front of the queue and resolve their account right now. So they're, but they're permanent, they're in place. And then, <clears throat> very important, we included the valid part in whether we should ever use an address or not, which is kind of where we, we met up with Pitney Bowes. If a record is not valid according to the US Postal Service, we pretty much ignore it unless it came directly from our, um, from our citizen like on a tax return. And that's because if we don't know that it's a good record because the post office says they can't deliver mail there, we probably shouldn't be using it. Um, I say you won't get it right the first time. You won't get it completely right the first time. Call out to CGI, we got it 80% right, which is awesome. But we worked with them on that other 20% where things didn't come out exactly right. Backtracking on some of the data profiling, um, accepting the need to tweak rules after they've been implemented, you're implementing them the best way you can anticipate and then go back and look at them. Um, profile the data afterwards. So we implemented a tool, then we started looking at the outcome from that was left over after we validated addresses, looking for ways to improve by implementing some more rules. And um, there's a lot of trends. Private mailboxes, by the way, are horrible and no, the taxpayer or citizen does not always know how to put their address in. Um, so then um, good governance was uh, not, not a small part of this. Up front, we established a governance team which is decision makers. So these are mid-level managers that re represent all of our lines of business and they come together to make decisions about the, the data. Um, they also have a path for escalation if something's icky or needs to be, you know, alarm bells need to be rung. And then they are supported by a team of um, subject matter experts that do the legwork. Um, I'm on that team. We do two things. One, we consistently ask, how could this go horribly wrong? My favorite question to ask of anything, um, because that allows you to anticipate problems. And then we act as four-year-olds. I don't say act like four-year-olds. We act as four-year-olds. So if anybody remembers the lovely old tale about the emperor's new clothes, you know, you have organizations and they have upper management and they're surrounded by people that are very positive and we're going to get the job done. But, and then there's lots of citizens out there in your team going, yeah, yeah, I'm working on this. We're, we're doing great. And you need the four-year-old in the audience that's going to say, hey, hey, you're not wearing any clothes. I was not allowed to use the junkyard dog analogy, so I pulled out my fairy tale, okay? Um, so have those SMEs in place. Have those people that can do the legwork. And then use good tools. One of the ways that we worked with our big project vendor was that the tool we were using wasn't working. Well, we had some problems. So we switched partway through the project and started using a Pitney Bowes project for our address validation um, out of the box. We took all the addresses that didn't validate it, revalidated them, and had 68% more success with them. And then again, our old model, you're not gonna get it completely right. We then started analyzing that data and identified other trends that still existed and were able to implement rules and you know, sub-processes to say, hey, tweak it this way and send it back through. Is it perfect? Nope, we still have bad addresses. But we mark them and we don't use them. So. Um, it, was, it was easy to customize Spectrum, and it did a better job out of the box. So again, if it's not working the first time, you don't get it completely right, back up, apply some other lessons learned, work with your vendors, they're great, and you'll have better success. And then, thank you. So, I mean, are there any, we're kind of at the end of the, the hour here, and I know they're gonna be wanting the room for the next one, but are there any quick questions here? What was the profiling tool we used? Uh, so we've got a couple of things that we use there. We have uh, a product that we, uh, we we package and resell from Global ID that, uh, that we use in some of the places. We also have some of our own profiling capabilities built into our platform. It just kind of depends on your level of need and the kind of problem that you're tackling. So we have a couple of options there. And Franchise Tax Board, we use Info Analyzer for the big profiling, and there's times when you fall back on Excel to dump a bunch of data in there and just play with, what can I spot in a pivot table? Yeah. So. And that was probably the question you were asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, again, if you take some time, please, and fill out your survey uh, on the mobile app, that'd be appreciated. And I'll be hanging around if you have any other questions. Thank you.